Andy Goldsworthy, Working with Ideas. Who is the man shown on the cover of this issue? And what do you think he's doing? In the photograph on the left is the primitive looking shape of a human figure inscribed on a large rock, some kind of ancient cave painting. Is the mysterious image on the bottom right a lunar eclipse or a photo taken from outer space? And in the picture on the top right, why does a gleaming spiral shape appear to be encircling a tree that is growing in the middle of the woods? All these unique photos were taken by a very unusual artist named Andy Goldsworthy. This British artist creates the majority of his works outside. He used no tools to construct them and works only with materials he finds by chance. Leaves, grasses, rocks, twigs, sand, ice, and snow. The season of the year, the weather, and the artist's location at the time give him his subjects and ideas. Goldsworthy considers his work to be collaborative with nature, saying, I couldn't possibly try to improve on nature. I'm only trying to understand it by an involvement in some of its processes. His work is about growth and decay, the changes of the season, and the idea that, as in nature, a work of art has a life that must eventually come to an end. Most of Goldsworthy pieces are made in rugged, inaccessible places. They are painstakingly created, then gradually worn away by wind, rain, and the heat of the sun. The stone arch on the cover that the artist constructed on a remote hillside in 1997 will last longer than the spiral made from individual icicles joined together on the right, or the circle of leaves painstakingly placed around a concave hole in the ground, which is below. The artist's rain shadow made by lying on a rock during a shower faded in a few minutes, but even the rock arch will eventually disappear. If it weren't for the photos Goldworthy makes right after each work is finished, hardly any of his pieces would ever be seen. To create his very personal constructions, Goldworthy uses nature and natural processes, but he rearranges the natural order, replacing accident and chaos with orderly progression. The artist makes use of universal shapes found in nature, spirals, concentric circles, holes, arches, jagged lines, and rainbow colors, but dislocates them and arranges them in ways that contradict natural law. Goldsworthy uses shapes, lines, textures, spaces, and colors in ways that remind the view of other things. A person's shape on a rock could be an ancient painting, a burial site, or a tombstone. A translucent spiral circling a tree photographed as it reflects the last rays of sunlight suggests something spiritual. And a round hole surrounded by bright, warm, red, orange, and yellow concentric circles has a cosmic or otherworldly quality. Monumentary Masterpieces the lines I make are ones that I hope to some extent already exist, somehow following the line of the land. Andy Goldsworthy. Andy Goldsworthy always took an interest in his rural surroundings, but in the 1970s, the British teenager had no idea where that curiosity would eventually lead him. Born in 1956 in Northern England, Goldsworthy made his first outdoor sculptures in the woods near his house. Working on nearby farms intensified his interest in the landscape around him. A poor student in high school, his career choices seemed limited when he was rejected from his top choice colleges. He graduated from a local art school where he took his first and only photography course. When he was 22, the artist sold photos of some of the pieces he had constructed in natural settings. Goldsworthy's work were so unusual that he didn't have an, an exhibition until 1986. Since that time, he has made he has had many shows and has published 10 books of his photos. Today, Goldsworthy lives in Scotland and creates his best works in the almost untouched countryside surrounding him. What feeling do you get when you look at this landscape in the bottom right? 
or on or the one on pages eight to nine. By merely pushing reeds into the bottom of a lake and tying them together, the artist has produced beautiful but bizarre effects. The subject of this horizontal, nearly symmetrical composition is a majestic landscape reflected in the still water of a mountain, lake, the work was a definite foreground, middle ground, and background. It is the middle ground that captures the viewer's attention, a web-like network of parallel vertical lines. The mirror image produced by the reflection creates the illusion of a geometric construction floating above the water. Angular, artificial, linear patterns contrast with the natural, organic shapes of the hill. The manipulation of the scale the linear network seems as large as the hills, adds to the strangeness of the scene. In constructing his works, Goldsworthy will sometimes borrow shapes from nature and transpose them to other settings. We would expect to see spiral shapes in, in snails or seashells, but, on, but the rocks don't arrange themselves in spirals. Even more eye-catching is the crack that runs through the middle of each rock. This spiral shape was made by breaking a number of round stones, then arranging them in, pro in a progression that steadily increases in scale as it radiates out from the center. Sharp stones were used to scratch white areas around the crack to an enhance the illusion of ripped stone. Often the artist will create his pieces such as the one top far right, by placing an object of unusual size, color, shape, or linear makeup in an otherwise untouched natural setting. The contrast with the normal looking snow covered background makes this jagged tree like linear object even more startling. Made of 12 straight sticks frozen together with ice, this angular construction looks completely out of place. Its location on the horizon line against the rich pinks and the blues of the sunset makes this object the focal point of the composition and further emphasizes its displacement. Improvised art. Working with nature means working on nature's terms. Andy Goldsworthy. Andy Goldsworthy has created his art all over the world, the North Pole, the Far East, the Australian Outback, and the U.S. His pieces take on the characteristics of the landscape in which he is working, but the artist finds most of what he is looking for right around his home in Scotland. Goldsworthy discovers entire worlds hidden away in tiny, inaccessible corners of nature. Just as he has no preconceived idea of what he is going to create, Goldsworthy brings no tools or adhesives to his worksite. What he makes is completely dependent on the environment in which he is working. I enjoy the freedom of using my hands and found tools, a stone, a feather, water, or ice. Reeds were bent and pushed into one another to make the construction on pages eight to nine. Leaves were moistened and stuck together in another work on page seven, the far right. The artist rarely collects leaves unless they have fallen and he would never break branches from a tree or use materials not found right on the spot. To produce this work on top left, he used blue and red stones. He rubbed parts of the blue stones with red to create the effects of a round negative blue image surrounded by a positive red ground. Goldsworthy not only has to work within his own rules because of his respect for nature, he must also catch what he calls the optimum moment. In the photo he takes of each piece, that means he must wait for just the right combination of weather, material, temperature, location, point of view, and lighting. A second loss in reaching for camera might mean the entire project would be lost forever. A good example is the photo of page seven on top left. The artist gathered iris blades and red berries to contrast complementary colors 
pairs and smooth and rough textures. He pinned the blades together with thorns to form a composition made of overlapping diagonal lines. He placed the berries, which kept spilling out in some of the geometric spaces. When everything was just right and he was about to take a photo, the composition began to disappear into the water. Fish were eating parts of it from below. No sooner had this problem been solved when a flock of ducks landed and he had to begin all over again. Nevertheless, the artist says the photo marks the moment when the work is most alive. There is an intensity about a work at, at its peak that I hope is expressed in the image. Another goal of the photo is to remove any trace of effort to make the work look easy. The viewer should get a feeling of perfection, even though the piece might exist for only a few hours or even minutes. Goldworthy prefers to be left alone to do his work. He is glad people don't go around the countryside looking for his sculptures. His audience is made up of walkers who always use the area or pass the place by accident. He says, I never mark my works on map. People have to hear about them through word of mouth.